Now, there's a story in the papers today that um, channel migrants from Albania, which I was talking about two days ago, if you remember, will be returned within days of arriving. Uh, many of you might go, heard that one before. And uh, the detail is Al Albanian migrants who cross the channel will be returned to their country within days under what's called a rapid removal deal announced last night, the deal being with Albania. And from next week, Albanians who claim asylum, and this is the key point, after arriving illegally, i.e. across the channel in most cases, will have their claims assessed immediately to fast track their removal. Now, those found to have passed through a safe third country will be deemed inadmissible to the UK asylum system, which, of course, will apply to anyone who comes across the channel because they will have come from France. Under a deal agreed with the Albanian government, they will put on charter planes, we've heard that before, to fly them back to the Balkan country. Home Office sources said this process would happen within days of them arriving. Well, I'd love to hear your opinion on that and how much uh, uh, weight you put on that claim it will be happening. Uh, but, uh, but joining me now uh, to discuss this uh, is Steve Valles simmons He is the uh, Refugee and Migrant Programme Director for Amnesty UK. Steve, good to talk to you again. Hello. Uh, well, I suppose I'll, I'll just kick off. What's your reaction to this? Um, uh, it's pretty dismal, to be honest. I do not understand how what you've just described as this plan can possibly work. If the UK is not going to determine the claims of people to assess who is entitled to asylum and who is not, it is not going to be in a position to simply fast remove people back to the places from which they have fled. And since Albanians, under the government's own data, are shown to be, when their claims are assessed, more likely to be refugees than not, that is all the more emphasised by what the government already knows. Well, just two points on that, first of all, and, and one of them I'd just like you to explain, but I think it's 53%, according to the last Home Office data, were, for want of a better word, valid claims. So I think that's the point you're making. So half weren't, half were, broadly speaking. Uh, you, you, your first point that you said um, if, if they're not going to access, uh, 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 assess them, it won't work. Explain to me what you mean. Well, the way in which this country, like any other, is obliged to deal with people seeking asylum is to assess properly and fairly, are they entitled to it? And before you do that, you're certainly not in a position to say that it is safe to return them to the place that they have come from because that's where an asylum seeker primarily says they have fled persecution. So simply refusing to deal with someone's claim doesn't allow you to determine whether they may be someone who could be safely returned or whether they aren't. The government will argue because they've reached this deal with Albania, because they passed through a safe country, that is where they should have made their claim. Well, there are two points about that. There is no obligation for someone to make their claim in one country rather than another. And it is perfectly legitimate for the relatively few people who choose to make their claims in this country to seek to do so. But in any case, whatever you think about that, the starting point is obvious. If someone is saying that they are at risk in their own country, you cannot lawfully and safely send them there until you have properly and fairly determined whether what they say well, is true. Presumably you can if you've got a deal with the Albanian government. You can't do so lawfully. So you're, you're, you or others would seek to tie this up in the courts? Because that's a matter of law that's going to end up in the courts, isn't it? Of course it will end up in the courts, and quite right too, because we, like other countries around the world, are obliged to deal with people's asylum claims. That's what we have legally committed ourselves to do, and our own laws reflect that. OK, so answer me this, if you would. Let's just move this on a little bit. Um, why are we getting asylum claims of young men, particularly, who are coming across the channels, uh, from Albania in the first place. I read your report on Albania, and you rightly point 
to uh, uh, absolute failings in the way the LGBT community has dealt with and for women. I agree with that. I, I hear what you're saying about that. But I can find no evidence in your report that would suggest why should we be accepting asylum claims from men, young men particularly, who are coming over, often having chucked their passports. There are two main reasons why Albanians, in addition to the matters you've addressed, although, of course, young men may well be LGBT people. Yeah, but you wouldn't suggest all the men coming across No, are, I'm, I'm not you? suggesting no. that, but I'm just trying to give a, a sure. full answer to your question. And there are two other main reasons why some of the claimants will be successful when their cases are properly dealt with. And then you can see this in the material the Home Office presents. And those two issues are to do with rampant blood feuds in that country and the inability of the state to protect people against that. And the other of those issues is human trafficking in and from that country. So people, for all the reasons that you've identified and the two I have also identified, provide reason why people seek asylum. It's true that not everyone is entitled to it, but unless and until you decide someone's claim, you can't assess that. But surely, what is a blood feud? Tell me what that is. Is that a, a gang warfare? Is it a family warfare? What is that? It is a long-standing, family-related, vindict vindictive approach to a justice system that has deep roots in Albanian culture going back centuries. And as all the information, if you look at Albania, will show blood feuds are extremely dangerous there's a there is a degree of effort trying to address a major problem in that country because of this sadly so it is not something that the government is able to get on top of at this time why should we uh, be accepting people who come across a safe country for example having come from a, a blood feud in their own country I'm 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 this is what I'm struggling with particularly when the border force themselves are now saying uh, that they're on the receiving end of a lot of violence uh, from mem uh, people who are coming Albanian arrivals who land in the channel this is Lucy Morton from the ISU Union saying members have seen and reported this increase over the last few months uh, that she I she she highlights that many of them are coming over with clearly a criminal um, icons uh, on them. She talks about tattoos from uh, the criminal system, evident from the criminal system in Albania, and they are the dominating the number of people who are coming over. Now, they may be, uh, what, they, they clearly, whether they have identity or not, I don't know, this report doesn't say. But on those grounds that there are effectively blood feuds, for example, going on uh, in there, uh, why would that even be considered uh, a, a case for asylum, particularly when the British people are rightly in a grip of a, a, a crime wave in drugs, not least where the Albanians have a huge grip on crime in this country, on the cocaine trade particularly. Uh, and, and these people are coming over with what are frankly looks to be half of them spurious claims. Well. As I've said, when the Home Office decide claims, and this has been so for well over a year now, of Albanians, more often than not, it determines the person is entitled to asylum, is fleeing for their life. Why should we provide asylum? Because we are duty bound in law, and it is the moral thing to do, not to expel people to places where they are likely to be killed or tortured or otherwise very seriously harmed. And why should we except that of people who enter our country by small boats illegally it's illegal though. it's not you, illegal well, no hang on it is illegal they are no hang on it's not illegal please well okay so so people are trying to get into this country right not through the usual channel ports of entry they are using traffickers which is a loathsome practice anyway OK, and you're telling me that therefore that process, our duty is to collect these people up and process them for uh, asylum. Why? I'll, I'll happily answer that question. This country does have immigration rules that require people to obtain visas to come here. Those rules make no provision for anyone to obtain a visa to come here to seek asylum.
but they normally no, oh, turn no, up no, at the airport. Please let me finish. Well, no, hang on. No, no, no. I, 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 You've I, asked I, me a question and I, you asked I, me I, I, no, I, a lot I, of comments in that. I, yes, I there are, but I've got to... No, hang on. Steve, I've, I've given, given you plenty of airtime, but I want to pick this particular point that you've raised in your answer. And when I was an MP, I would have these cases often come across my desk. These, these, that was designed for people who would turn up at airports, take asylum, would come through the ports on boats, who would then apply for asylum. We're talking about people who are making a dangerous journey, and as far as I see, and you haven't convinced me yet, and you can go on to try, are making an illegal entry into this country. Well, thank you for the invitation, and I will explain why I say it is not an illegal entry. The first thing to note you do see different routes to this country now than you have referenced when you were an MP, and that is in large part because the routes that you have mentioned have been shut down. So people cannot come to claim asylum by those no, routes. No, and that's deliberate. Is, please, please let me finish. Well, it, it's, it's, it's worth pointing out that's deliberate. I know it's deliberate, but what I'm saying to you is that people are entitled in law to seek asylum. This country makes no visa available for anyone to seek asylum. This country requires anyone who wishes to seek asylum here to get here. So if you do the things that have resulted in what you say, which is shutting down routes by planes and boats, I'm afraid all that you have done is pass people into the hands of smugglers because that is all that's which, left. Which is because illegal into this thing, country, Steve. It is not illegal and it is also unlawful to punish someone for entering this country without permission in order to make their asylum claim. Steve, you've made your point well and for time reasons only, we have to go. We could have gone on. Thank you very much indeed for that. Steve Aldez-Simmons.